you are. Happy Friday, everybody. It's Dr. Bridget Young from babyformulaexpert.com coming to you from my new location. We have officially moved from Denver to Rochester, New York. It's a long move. Uh, let me tell you, um, but we're here. So you'll be seeing probably a lot colder weather, a lot gloomier skies, but we're very happy to be here. This is probably my first glass of wine in two weeks. So that's why I missed last week. It was just not happening. Um, but I'm very excited to be here today to talk about, in big quotes, sensitive versus gentle formulas on the market how to differentiate between uh, the vocabulary that's used, and most importantly, how to pick one of these formulas if you're considering one that's gonna be best for your baby. My baby cousin is here helping me watch my kids. It's amazing. So you may not actually see them, which would probably be a welcome break to all of you. So first things first, I could just end this whole thing right now when I think I posted on Facebook, like I'll be talking about the difference between sensitive and gentle formulas. Um, there is no difference, so there you go. But I'll give you more. So these terms are used widely, but they are not regulated. And so legally and technically, they mean nothing. It's just like when you see natural on a food product. So comfort, gentle, sensitive, soothing, a formula company can say that about anything. Uh, you know, this is very soothing sugar <laughs> or anything. So it's so hard for parents to be able to weed through what's marketing and what is really something that may help a baby who's having issues. And so I'm gonna give you some science behind why formulas may be marketed this way so that you can look at, the big thing is, look at the list of ingredients to know what you're getting for your baby. So formula companies or the formula, the food science industry has two major ways of making a formula sensitive, for lack of a better word, or you know, like a specialty, easy to digest formula. This is by altering either the carbohydrate content or altering the protein content or a combination of both. So you can alter the carbohydrate content by reducing the lactose. Breast milk is all lactose for carbohydrate, but a lot of formulas use other carbohydrates that are usually glucose-based. I have a whole happy hour about lactose sensitivity in babies that I think would be really helpful if you think this is a problem for your baby. A lot of babies do have a hard time digesting a lot of lactose as it's delivered in formula. Um, and so a lot of companies market a sensitive formula by just reducing the amount of lactose and replacing it with an alternative sugar. The most common are corn syrup, um, maltodextrin, glucose syrup solids, all of these are met metabolically digested to be glucose, whereas lactose is metabolically digested to be glucose and galactose. That's an extra nerd bonus for you there. Um, the other way formula companies can attempt to make a formula easier to digest or more comfortable for a baby is by reducing the size of the proteins. And this is oh, chipmunk. Um, hydrolyzing the proteins. So you'll usually see this on the label as partially hydrolyzed whey or milk protein isolate, or you might see whey hydrolysate. Those mean the same thing, that the protein has been broken down a little bit in size so that the protein size is more similar to breast milk, which has smaller proteins than a cow's milk. So those are two very different approaches to making a formula more digestible. And depending on what's bothering your baby, you know, if they have a lactose sensitivity, changing the protein is not gonna help them and vice versa. If they're having a protein digestion issue, reducing the lactose isn't going to help them. Um, and so you can use, like go about it scientifically and change one ingredient at a time to try to figure out what's wrong. Um, but just be aware of what you're feeding can go a really long way in terms of reducing the amount of time it takes you to get to a formula that's just perfect for your little one. So I'm gonna give you some examples of the major formulas and the marketing they use and what they've done, um, which will make sense in a minute. So let's start with Gerber. Gerber has chosen to only market partially hydrolyzed proteins. They've kind of put their stake in the sand and said, we think this is best, so that's all we're gonna offer. So that's why they don't have as many formulas. All of their formulas are partially hydrolyzed and they have two cows-based formulas, Gerber Gentle 
and Gerber Soothe. Both of them are partially hydrolyzed 100% whey. Gentle, which is their standard, the orangish can, has 70% lactose, 30% other sugar, which is maltodextrin. Soothe, which is their specialty formula that's supposed to be for especially cranky babies, has the other way around of carbohydrate. 30% lactose, 70% maltodextrin. So they're using the Soothe, their specialty is both partially hydrolyzed and additionally reduced lactose. There's some other subtle differences, but that's the major, major difference um, in, the, in the major ingredients. So let's talk about Enfamil. Enfamil has their standard um, formula, which is all lactose and intact protein. And then they have their major, I'll call it their cranky pants formula, is Gentilese, which is very confusing because it's not Gerber Gentle. A lot of parents get confused there. Those, they're very different formulas. Their Gentilese is partially hydrolyzed both milk protein and additional whey. So it's going to be mostly whey with some casein, which is similar to the ratio in breast milk. So it's starting off with a different protein than Gerber, but then broken down to the same co comparable size. Gentilese also has very low lactose, about um, it's 20% lactose. 80% they use corn syrup solids, which is um, will metabolize to all glucose in the intestine. Um, here's something interesting. Enfamil also markets regulene, which is they use language to market for babies who are constipated, but it is a partially hydrolyzed formula. So it, it is going to be appropriate for a lot of other potential ailments in addition to constipation. So it is it has the same broken down protein base as Gentilese, the partially hydrolyzed mixture of whey and casein. But the difference is regulene, the major difference, there's some other subtle differences. The major difference between Gentilese and regulene is that regulene has more lactose. It's a 50-50 split between lactose and corn syrup solids. So that's how Enfamil markets um, for, you know, they market Gentilese for gas and colic and they market regulene for constipation. But again, these could work for a lot of different babies and babies who are having gas from um, casein proteins are still getting some component of casein in these formulas. So, you know, it's not, if you have a baby, you know this, it's not as easy as just going with marketing and finding the perfect formula. But knowing what you're getting into can make it faster. Similac is the most complicated and where I have seen many, many families um, and pediatricians get confused um, with the marketing particularly. So because Similac markets a sensitive formula and a total comfort formula, and they're very different. So Similac's sensitive formula is a lactose-reduced formula. I was on the phone with them today and I got cut off, so I don't know the exact percentage of lactose. Looking at the ingredients, it, I think it's around between 10 and 20% lactose. The rest is from maltodextrin, the same sugar that Gerber uses. But there, here's the kicker. Their sensitive formula is an intact protein. It's the biggest size. In addition to that, it's just cow's milk protein. They don't add additional whey. So it's very different from the protein that they use, say, in Similac Advance, which has additional whey added. So when you switch a baby from, uh, say, Advance to Sensitive, you're changing the carbohydrate, but you're also providing a protein that um, may be a little bit more reactive. So that's, uh, and a lot of people don't realize that. If they have a lactose problem, it's probably going to work great for them, and it works wonderfully for a lot of families. Um, but it's not decreasing the size of the proteins. Similac does have a partially hydrolyzed formula and it's their total comfort um, which the wording just kills me like I don't know I have babies I would love I want them to be in total comfort I want them to have sensitive um, ingredients I want the, to be gentle and soothing like it, you feel like you have to choose one of these adjectives to which really speaks to you which is not fair so Similac's total comfort formula is they're partially hydrolyzed it's a hundred percent whey so the protein is the same as Gerber's but they um, are more lactose reduced than Gerber. So it's probably going to have the same lactose as the sensitive. So I'm guessing between 10 to 20 percent. Um, and the total comfort uses a combination of maltodextrin and sucrose. 
and sucrose will metabolize to a combination of glucose and right, fructose. Well, no, so it's providing a different basic fuel um, than either a glucose-based sugar or a lactose. So those are the major your big brands and how they have chose, ch chosen to formulate sensitive formulas and then market them. So in general, you, you can see that the industry has unofficially stuck to the standard where sensitive seems to be related to reduced lactose. And the other words like gentle and soothe seem to be related to protein hydrolysis. But I'm really hesitant to even say that because these terms are not regulated. I can't emphasize that enough. And so formula companies are under no obligation to stick to this unofficial rule. And so you really just have to. Sorry, I lost wireless there. I thought I could sit and sneak in a sip of wine, but it came back too fast. <laughs> you really have to read the list of ingredients to know is the protein altered, is the carbohydrate altered, or is it both? Um, and then this applies to other companies as well. Like I'm gonna give you the example in organics, it works like Earth's Best and the Honest Company market a sensitive formula. And they have chosen to, um, basically it will be sensitive for babies with a lactose sensitivity. So these formulas, both Earth's Best sensitivity and Honest Company sensitive are reduced lactose but to very different degrees. Earth's Best only has 1% of the carbohydrate as lactose. I mean, that's barely any. And um, the Honest Company has 26% lactose. So while they've taken the same approach, if you switch from one to the other and your baby is truly very sensitive, that's a big jump. So again, even though they have taken the same approach and they're using the same language, the end product is very different. So um, again, you just really have to look at the list of ingredients and judge whether or not you see lactose, where it falls in the order of the list of ingredients, and whether you see the words hydrolysis, hydrolysit. Um, I think that would all you would be see on the label, which would re refer to the protein. So that was a whole lot, and I hope it wasn't overwhelming. The punchline is you just have to look at the list of ingredients and try to go into picking a formula knowing what you're looking for. Are you trying to find a formula with altered protein, or are you trying to find a formula with altered lactose concentrate or amount, um, and then choose accordingly? And I'm, I'm going to give you a couple, ex two examples of how I've seen um, babies kind of struggle through this because it is so hard and the first is pediatricians aren't taught this so it's not their fault so i know several pediatricians who if a baby has a problem they'll say go buy a sensitive formula um but that you know again that could mean a lot of things and switching from one sensitive to another sensitive could be a really big jump so here's an example of um these sounds so say a baby is on gerber's standard formula um, which we know, I just told you, is a partially hydrolyzed formula, but that's not, you know, like a f flagship on the front of their label. It's only on the list of ingredients. Baby develops a lot of gas. So they go to the pediatrician and mom and the pediatrician decide, okay, we're gonna try a sensitive formula and see if that helps. So mom thinks, well, as long as I'm, I hear this all the time. This is not just one case study, this is many. As long as I'm switching formulas, I, I would prefer organic. So she chooses, the honest company organic and switches which good for her that sounds like a good like, the logic is there to me um, however we know that's a really big change um, first of all it's not that much reduced lactose because Gerber gentle already is reduced lactose and it's a very different protein not only is the protein source different but the protein size is different so it's a very large jump for the baby and Oftentimes, a jump like that doesn't go well if it's not done very smoothly and strategically. Um, and so I've seen that a lot where that kind of a thing happens where you, you are just not sure what you're looking for, so you just choose based on language and it doesn't end well. Um, here's another example where hopefully a pediatrician would be able to be helpful based on biology, but um, again, pediatricians don't receive a lot of training in, in nutrition. so. Baby who's on Enfamil Infant was supplementing with Enfamil Infant and at about three months, mom has to go back to work, stops pumping, so baby is transitioning to exclusive formula. And then 
flares with eczema. So they decide, okay, let's change the formula so to a more sensitive formula to hopefully address the eczema. Um, and so, sounds great, let's try to address this eczema, but they choose Similac sensitive. Now, there's two things that would make me not choose this formula, which you wouldn't know unless you look at the label. One, Similac sensitive, um, changes we know changes the carbohydrate as a way of making it sensitive usually eczema is a symptom of a reaction to some kind of protein statistically not hundred percent of the time but if you're going with statistics it's probably the protein so not only does changing from enfamil infant to Similac sensitive not change the size of the proteins but Similac sensitive provides a higher concentration of casein proteins which are more reactive for lack of a better word like if a baby has an allergy it's li more likely to be a casein than a whey not a hundred percent you know but knowing that would make you know okay well Similac sensitive probably not the best choice if we're trying to address eczema particularly. Um, so again, seeing, I've seen this happen many, many times and um, yeah, it just breaks my heart that, and, you know, and they figured it out, they got to a formula that worked great for them and the baby obviously was fine. Eczema never killed anyone. Um, so it's totally fine. I don't mean to belittle these choices because it's so hard, but I just want to make the point that thinking about the ingredients you're using, thinking about the symptoms your baby has, and then choosing a different formula strategically is definitely the best way to go about it. And if I had my own way, formula cans would all be just like aluminum silver cans with a list of ingredients. Like the marketing is horrific because it's confusing, it can be misleading, and it, and it provides no help in terms of individualizing choices. So I'm off my soapbox now. Um, and I hope that was helpful and convinced you that it's all about the list of ingredients. Oh, Tiffany, sorry, eczema can be related to allergy to a protein. Yeah, I use the term allergy very loosely. Um, so, you know, a true allergy is an immune response to a particular protein. I would say more, um, it can, it act, I mean, eczema or skin reactions can be a sign of an allergy, but usually in my experience, Experience, it's more usually a sign of a sensitivity. So what I wanted to emphasize there is that in my experience, and I think in, in general, this is a fair statement, that eczema is, if it, eczema is caused by a reaction to something in the formula, because it can just be environmental, it's not always nutrition, um, it's most likely to be a response to some component of the protein, not the carbohydrate. So if you are feeding a formula, the baby develops eczema, and then you choose a new formula that has the same protein source and just changes the carbohydrate, I wouldn't expect it to really help the eczema at all because the protein is still there. I hope that clarifies and helps. So if a baby has eczema, usually that's the first thing I try to tweak. And again, not it's not 100%. Babies are all unique in both their beautiful personalities and their sad little problems. <laughs> so, but statistically, it's usually a protein issue. Hi, honey. Oh, you can come. Come on. Okay. I gotta go. Um, thanks so much, guys. Welcome to my new house. You'll be seeing more soon. You running? Um, I'm gonna go do some running and I'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you again next week. Thanks so much. Bye.